In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know for how to use my favorite digital comics program, Storyboard That. Creating digital comics in your classroom is an excellent opportunity to provide students with a fun, engaging way to practice rigorous academic skills. Storyboard That is consistently a huge hit in my class, and I guarantee your students are going to love it. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the examples of digital comics that students have created in my class. I'm going to show you how to set up templates that you can push out to your students using Storyboard That. And then I'm also going to show you just some of the basic editing and creation features that students need to know and that you'll need to know if you're going to be teaching them how to create digital comics. As always, you can find all the documents that I reference in this video on my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com. And if you find this video helpful, please make sure to share it with other teachers that you know, hit the like button, and consider subscribing to my channel as well as clicking that notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly education technology videos. Right now, I'm going to show you some student examples so that you can see a few different ways that I use digital comics with my students. The first example we're looking at here is of a storyboard that a student created for a book that we're reading in class, Freak the Mighty. So you can see here that students created dialogue for the characters in the books as well as different summaries about what happened in each of the major plot points of the story. Next, I also use digital comics as a way for students to demonstrate their understanding in a creative way. For this particular assignment, students created a Paleolithic to Neolithic Changes comic book where they had to show their understanding about the change that agriculture brought to the world. So here I had students take nonfiction information and turn it into creative dialogue. And then they also had to summarize why the particular change that they were writing about was important. And then the last example I'm going to show you here is actually a project that we did across disciplines where students studied a marine mammal and they included real pictures of their marine mammal and a whole timeline of what happened to that marine mammal after it was rescued by the Marine Mammal Center, diagnosed and then released back into the wild. So you can see that digital comics are really dynamic and can be used for lots of different purposes across subjects. They're really great for synthesizing information, for having students visualize what they've been reading and also to have students practice different skills like taking nonfiction information and converting that nonfiction information into creative dialogue. As with any project that you do in class, the ultimate success of the product that students create is going to be dependent upon the pre-planning that goes into it. What I'm going to show you are two different rough drafts that I use. The first is a very basic rough draft for setting up the comic book that students created to show the changes from Paleolithic to Neolithic ages. Here, students are really going to focus on the content that is going into their panels. And then another example here is a rough draft version of the storyboard that students created in my class. Again, I emphasize that the content is correct in the rough draft, and I use the time when students are working on their rough drafts to circulate around the room and make sure that it looks good before we jump into using that tech. Okay, so let's say you're ready to import your students into Storyboard That. What you're gonna do is go up to My Classes, click Add Classes and Invite Students. Here, you're going to create a new class that you want to add. Click OK Next Step. Select how students are going to sign in, either with Google, with Microsoft, or um, you can manually enter usernames or passwords. Here I'm going to be given some options for how I want to share the signup link. So what I do is I click copy signup link so that I can share the URL with my students. I can select specifically which class I want to send students into if I have multiple periods or different classes. So here I'm going to select test class that will create a link that I can now put on Google Classroom. Students will click on that link. It will take them directly into the portal for Storyboard That, and then I can create assignments that I'm going to assign directly to the students that are in that particular class. The next thing that I'm going to show you is how you can set up a template. I'm actually going to start by going up to create a storyboard. 
And here, I'm going to see the basic storyboard template that students would also see if you did not pre-create a template for that. So if you want to change the layout, you can change the layout options here. You can have just a cell, you can have a title and the cell, you can have the cell in the description, the title, cell and description. You can also change the layout to be a traditional storyboard. You can have a cinematic layout. You'll see as well here the timeline template that I use for students. So as you can see, there are lots of different options simply for how you're going to do the layout. So I'm going to go ahead and select the title, cell, and description. And I'm also going to change the cells so that they are stacked vertically as opposed to horizontally like you saw in the student example. I'm going to make it a one by three comic. I'll click update storyboard. And there you'll see that I now have a slightly different template. There are other things, of course, you could do if you want to pre-write instructions into the template. You can edit the boxes. So here, for example, I could write a sentence starter that I want students to use. There's also an option to use advanced tools. If you click on advanced tools, one of the tools that I do sometimes use is cell size. When you use cell size, you can increase the size of the cell so that when a student logs in to their account, they're going to see that larger cell. Okay, so let's say I'm ready to use this template as an assignment for students. I'm going to click save. I'll give it a title. I'll click save storyboard. Then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to click convert storyboard to template. This is going to allow me to access it now as an assignment that I push out to students. Now that I'm ready to create an assignment, I'm going to go up to my assignments create a new assignment. I'll give that assignment a name. Here I can customize instructions for the comic. And now you'll see the different templates that I've created that I can now use for my assignment. So I'm going to select the template I just created. I'm going to go down to next. Now I will select the class that I want to assign that template to. And now when students log in through that link that I sent them, they will see the assignment in their dashboard and they'll be able to access the template and start creating their comics. Now I'm going to show you the most important tools that you'll need to know in order to teach your students how to actually make the comic books. The first is that I'm going to teach students that they're able to access a ton of different scene options in their digital comics. So as you can see up top, there are all kinds of different scenes that students can choose from. Towns entertainment, outdoor. Really, there are just tons of different options. Once I'm ready to pick the scene that I want, you select the scene, drag it into the panel, and it will appear. The scene has a couple of editing options that are useful to show to students. If you go up to edit scene, you'll see that you can change the time of day to nighttime. You can change the weather snow or rain. So the scenes themselves are really customizable and that's pretty cool. The next important thing to teach students is how to drag and drop characters into their panels. There are lots of different characters that students can choose from just like the scenes. You'll see there are adults and teens and modern characters and characters from medieval times, mythological characters, stuff like that. So again, there are just loads of different options and these characters are also fully customizable once you drag them in. Once I find that character that I like, you simply drag and drop the character in to the panel. You can pull on the edge of the character to make that character bigger or smaller. And then even more so than the scenes, the characters are fully customizable. So you have the option to change their hair color, their skin color, their eye color, the color of their clothing, even the color of their sandals. Another basic way to change the appearance of the character that also helps make the comics look significantly better and more realistic and not so static is to have students edit the different poses of their characters. So they can do that by going to edit pose. Here you'll see that the students have all kinds of different options for head position, facial expression, position of the hands and legs. You can have a character sitting down. There's just, again, all kinds of different things that you can do. So I'm going to select a focus face, face to the side, put the hands up. 
Once you're ready with your character's pose, select update pose. And the next thing that I'm going to show students how to do is find different objects that they can also drag and drop into their comic panels. So I'm actually gonna search for that in the search box here. Just like the characters, once a student finds an image that they like, they simply have to drag and drop it into the comic panel. They can adjust the size of the image as necessary and drag it where they want to go. Here, I'm also going to select an arrow. And I just wanna show real quick how you can choose the rotation tool to rotate that arrow in the direction that the student wants it to face. I'll make that arrow a little bit bigger and drag it where I want it to go. In addition to characters, there are also animals. You could direct students to search for animals. The animals are also available under the characters tab. So here, if I want to have my character hunting a rabbit across the water, I could do that. And also drag the corners of the image to resize it and change the coloring just like I could with the characters. The next important basic comic creation function that students need to know is how to add a textable. Students add a textable by going to the textable tab. Here you can drag in any of the dialogue boxes that you want a character to use, resize it as necessary, drag it where you want it to go, and then the text inside of that text bubble is fully editable. And again, here's that opportunity to teach students how to take some information that they've learned and write some interesting, funny dialogue. Now that students know the basics about how to create a comic, I'm gonna show them a couple more advanced tools so that they can make them a little bit faster and customize them a little bit more and make them look really professional. One important editing tool to make the comic creation go a little bit faster is to click on the character, click copy under edit, and that's actually going to make a copy of the character that the students could then drag and drop into another panel. If you don't show students how to do this, they're gonna spend a lot of time recreating the same characters over and over. A couple of other tools that are useful to know how to use are the layering tools. So this character is actually properly layered right now. The bow and the arrow and the character are all in the correct position. But let's say that I wanted to have that character um, actually be in front of the bow and arrow. I can click on the character go to layers, click bring forward, and notice how the character's hand is now in front of the bow and arrow. So if that were the case, I would actually show students how to send that back so that it's more properly layered and just looks a little bit better. Another cool tool is the crop tool that's gonna allow students to position their characters in different, more creative ways. You can do a crop by dragging a character down into your scene. And let's say that the student wants this character to be standing in the water. Well, right now that looks like they're just walking on water. So if I want them to show that they're inside of that water, I'm gonna go up to the crop tool. I'm going to drag the crop up maybe to the waist, click crop image, drag that character down, Maybe I'm going to edit that pose so that my character looks startled. Maybe they're worried that they're going to get shot by that bow and arrow. And now it just looks a little bit more realistic because I cropped the lower half of the character's body. Now, the last thing that I will also show students how to do is upload their own image. They can go up to the upload button, pick an image that they want to upload into their comics, and the students that do this end up creating these really cool hybrid real image with comic image comic books that have a really unique kind of flavor. So it's also just a cool tool to show students how to do and help them express their creativity. If you have any questions about how I use digital comics in my classroom or about digital comics in general, please ask in the comments below. Even if you just get a single month subscription to Storyboard That, I think you're definitely going to like it and I pretty much guarantee that your students are going to be really into creating digital comic books. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you found it useful, please hit the like button and share it with other teachers that you know and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my weekly education technology tutorials. Thanks and have a great week.